Is I'm not active in any OWASP chapter, board, anything like that. But I do know some about static code analysis tools. And what I would like to give you is the ability to understand what the tools are good for, what they're not good for, and which one that you should use on your code base, if you, want, if you should use one at all. And I will start from the very, very beginning. Who has not seen Batman Begins? Okay, so oh, almost there, oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. they can still stay, right? Yes, yeah, of course, you get to stay. I, I, will, I will tell you the most important parts. Um, spoiler. spoiler alert. No, I, because I, I googled begin and then this one came up, so... So then I kind of stuck with this theme. So starting from the beginning, I'm going to start with a little bit of Java code. So... Um, this is a piece of insecure Java code. And... Uh, did anything happen? No. no? There you go. Right, so this is where something starts. We get something from the uh, search request. And then we put that into a variable. That variable travels down here. And then we do a database query with it here. Right? So, this data flow, uh, this is what the static code analysis tools, the SCA tools, should be able to find out. And this is known as a source, where you, something comes in, something nasty, possibly, and then it travels down in your code, and then the really bad thing happens somewhere. Source, path, and sync. That's the terms that I use. Uh, now as a test for you guys. So, path. That wasn't a test though, but thank you. Uh, right, what if someone inputs this instead of password? What is this? Anyone? Yes, correct. I will just show you that I also know the answer to this one. Right, so this is uh, what an SQL injection is about. You put in stuff that this would just evaluate to always true and give out everything about the user. So even if your password isn't correct, you will get out everything from the user. This is an SQL injection, and it's on the OWASP top 10, number one. Still, I think. OWASP top 10 is a list of dangerous stuff that could happen to your computer programs. Right, so what we're talking about here is that you have your application, you get stuff from outside, internet, whatever, and what you should do is you should validate that, and you should sanitize it before it goes into the database or before you output it again. So this is the preferred flow. And the trick here is that if your code base is 100 lines of code, then it should be, it's pretty easy to find all of this out. But when your code base looks something like this, you have a much harder problem to figure out where the stuff comes from and where it goes. And this is where tools can help you. And usually uh, in security, we talk, I say we as if I'm a security expert. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> we have black box and white box. Black box is when the code is deployed, compiled, deployed, up and running and you have a penetration tester, maybe you have a, a tool like WebInspect, something that simulates attacks on it. And Whitebox is before, when you just have source code. So before it's compiled, before it's deployed. And static code analysis is all about the Whitebox. So now you know the difference. And here we, here we are at the, uh, the main page. So you now did Web Security 101, and now you're ready for the next part. So I'm going to talk about the SCA tools. This is a picture from Batman Begins. Have you this seen? Liam Neeson? Any fans? OK. <coughs> I'm a fan. This is the best movie, though, with him in. If you haven't seen this one, you have to see it. 
<laughs> right, sorry, back to uh, code analysis. So let's start without the tools and just uh, because static code analysis or source code analysis is not a trademark or copyrighted word. So uh, in all honesty, I think that code reviews is static code analysis. It's white box, you look at code, you try to figure shit out. So you have, uh, I think most of you would do this. If you're developers, you do code reviews. If you don't, you probably should. <laughs> but there are tools, so you can automate this to help you out. Uh, you might hate me for this, but I'm gonna take the chance anyway. So there's manual work, which is looking at code together, finding out stuff, fixing it. And then there's machines that can help you out. Oh, which one is, which one is best? Manual, tools. Which one is the best? I'm gonna need all of you to speak to the person right to you or left to you. It cannot be the guy, the guy that you came here with, Robin, Peter. You don't get to talk to each other. I'll give you one, one to two minutes. Discuss this with your newfound friend. <coughs> I'm sorry, I hate when people do this to me, but you have to do it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it worked out automatically. Right. So, who is in favor of manual work? Hands up. Groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Not only. Not only. No, not only. Okay, well, that's a good one. Uh, and then tools, anyone? That should be the other 50%. <laughs> Unless you're really smart. Okay. Exactly, there you go. Boom. The correct answer is, of course, a combination of the two. Sorry? Yes, it was. That's why I'm sorry. I said you might hate me. but uh, The point here is that a tool is only so good as the pilot or driver who is operating it. And when it comes to security vulnerabilities, that these SCA tools try to find. Uh, there are usually two terms that come up. It's false negatives and false positives. And a false negative is when this happens. And then uh, eight to nine months later this happens. So this is a false negative. So this is in your code. It says it's all fine, but it wasn't fine. And then we have the false positive, which is this one. I think you know what the next picture is going to be. And then this happens. <laughs> uh, right. So, from my experience, manual work is needed to root out all the false positives. I mean, the false negatives, if you can find it and the tool can find it, then who can find it? But usually, I'd say that these tools, they err on the side of finding too much stuff. And this is where you need to report false positives and say that we don't care about this stuff. Or I remember one tool I used which said that, oh, you know, this is really bad if you're using Ruby, and it was all Java code. So people actually need to be in on this. When it comes to static code analysis, have you seen any tools that handles uh Red synchronization and things like that? Mm, yes, one actually. Good question. If you have any questions, just do like this guy. Just ask him out. Oh, yeah, you want to know which one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clockwork Insight. So, this is OWASP top 10 that I mentioned. It's like uh, the OWASP official list of bad stuff that can happen to you. This is top 10. 2013, I think now it's been divided into different categories or something. OWASP people? Mm, the, 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 the top 10 list is still there. Okay. There's another list. There are more top 10 lists. Yeah, there are more top 10 lists. Yeah. Oh, this one is three years old, but I think it's almost the same. They, they do it every third year. So it's oh! One this year, I, think. I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they did it some months back. So. <laughs> oh, so it's like Apple, like they wait and wait and then they have like a launch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an Apple fan, but just, just saying. Uh, I said, this is what you can find. 
with a source code analysis tool. Um, because <coughs> who knows? That is, this is not really code based. Uh, this is configuration issues, also not really code related. However, there's a huge difference that you need to think about. Um, and that's the difference between the free tools and the costly ones, the non-free ones. And what Liam is thinking about here is that there's flow tracing and there's pattern matching. Those are the two, um, two ways of doing source code analysis. And out of the ones in OS plan, this is how I estimate who can find what. So pattern matching can do this and this, and then you need flow tracing for the rest. If you try to use pattern matching for the rest, you will have tons and tons of uh, false positives, I'm sure. And the thing here is that pattern matching is usually free, like PMD. Anyone uses that one? Find bugs? Find, yeah. They're free. Not super interesting, though. And SonarCube is another one, free one. But SonarCube, I'd say, is more interesting. You can plug in some uh, flow, flow tracing purchased tools into it as well. And flow tracing, we have this one. So this is the one that I worked on for three years, so I know very well how it works. And from my experience and comparing to competitors, I'd say that they work in pretty much the same way. I will get to the details, but I'm also I'm not employed here anymore, so I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> you don't have to buy this one. Um, but if you do, someone in Taiwan will be very happy. And what it does is that Cosicurious takes in all the source code and builds a tree, tree of its mm -hmm. own, like an abstract syntax tree or something that represents the code base. And then it starts out by looking at the root, where can I get in, here are the sources, sort of trace around inside the tree, and then it will find some things for you. And this is uh, a thing we added. Yes, sorry. How much time does that process take? Um, excellent question. How long time does it take to drive a car? Depends on where you're going. So it depends on how do you build your code bases. And on a web goat, which is code base of maybe 100,000 lines, something, it took roughly 20 minutes to build the tree and then do the, do the tracing. I know some tools that are faster <coughs> and some that are slower, but I mean, it's usually suggested for nightly builds. You shouldn't sit around and wait for it. If you have a code base of half a million, lines of code, then it could take hours. We usually run out of memory, though. We tried to scan our uh, code secure with code secure, and we ran, ran, ran out of memory every time. So there are limitations, of course, to this. Uh, it's good that you're not a sales person. <laughs> yeah, 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 because I would suck at my job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had this. One question. Then. Yes. Uh, the increase more exponentially the greater the code base becomes. Is that, have, have you seen the same patterns yes. on all tools? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, because there are more paths that you, I think, I think the, if you, the tree building takes, that, that's a linear time, but then the flow tracing, because there's much more ways to go and there's type cost and whatever, mm -hmm. that will go up exponentially, yes. Right, we had this cool thing which is, uh, you could specify yourself that <coughs> this function with this, uh, with this function signature will sanitize everything that's cross-site scripting. So then if the flow tracing would go through that, it would just stop finding all the cross-site scripting. I'd say that's a, uh, uh, yes? How do you detect that it's sanitized? Properly. We didn't care. That's the thing. Okay. If the user tells us anything that goes through this function is sanitized for this, I mean, you could just put in everything there. It sanitizes SQL injection, cross-scripting, whatever. And then you have all your code always go through that one. 
and we will find nothing. So this like, you know, having the pilot fly fly the ship <coughs> aircraft, sorry. I mean, that's one of the things which uh, IBM is touting that their engine is able to look at strings and detect if it's sanitized. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe them. <laughs> you, you mean Fortify, HP Fortify? No, IBM. Uh, oh, sorry, IBM. IBM uh, <coughs> Rational. Yeah. Sure. Okay. They they claim they can uh, find out if a function is doing uh, string-based sanitation. Okay. And learn it. So they have this special patented thing they think is just magic. Okay. Um. Yeah. I haven't developed it. It's, uh, it's yeah, okay. possible it sucks, but yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they are doing well, marketing for it. I, I haven't heard about that, but my suggestion is a pinch of salt with these kind of things, because yeah. it's usually a sales talk. Uh, well, I mean, this is a pretty neat feature for this tool. Uh, our main competitors were, or, I don't care anymore, I'm not employed there, uh, check marks, fortify, coverity, clockwork. I say coverity, fortifying, check marks. They do what we do in the same way. We, sorry, I mean them. And then clockwork, clockwork is different because they integrate into your build. So, and they're much more specified, they're much better at C++ and C. So memory leaks and stuff like that. Uh, where are we now? Right, this is a snapshot from Checkmarks. Uh, so you have the flow here and it tells you exactly you know, this is wrong here, you should do this. And you can see how the flow, the flow moves on in the code. I think this is an excellent tool, for because anyone can use it, and you don't have to be an expert in security or know anything at all. It just tells you, please do this. However, they cost a lot of money, these tools. I think check marks and uh, clockwork, for 10 developers, one year license, is quarter of a million Swedish crowns, so twenty-five thousand euros thereabouts. Okay. You okay with that? It means two thousand five hundred euros per developer per year, so that's much less than what we pay for tools in my work. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I would say that's very expensive. So you have to really be careful before you buy one. I know Ericsson and Ericsson employees. Here, one, two. Oh, I think Ericsson used Coverity back in the days, but he stopped because it was too expensive. And also, it maybe didn't find anything useful. So, going back, yes. What you have is you pay a lot of money and you buy super advanced mega jet fighter, but you have to have a pilot to drive it which is where you guys come in. So you have to know if it, if it fills your needs, if it finds stuff in your code, if you can use it in the way that you want to use it on your code base. It's, a, not, that, uh, it's not so many. It's hard to find the competence sometimes to get uh, someone to be that pilot. Yes. A, a, a well-skilled developer and uh, security aware. Yeah. One of these costs two billion US dollars, and training the pilot uh, is almost ten times the price. So now we all know more <laughs> <your> salary. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to spend money, then this is what you should get. Uh, now is a bit of break time. During the break, if you want to, if you're into Liam, you can see. Uh, <laughs>